What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today we have got a bit of a challenge on our hands. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can photograph an entire game, an entire football game using one lens and one camera. I think it's gonna be quite a cool video to see if we can do it. Now, of course, typically a professional sports photographer now, when they're working pitch side, they have a whole host of gear. They will normally be working with at least two camera bodies, normally a 400mm, f2.8, something like that on a monopod, normally a 70 to 200, something like that on another camera. Maybe they might even have a third camera with like a 2470 or a 1635, something more wide angle as well. But actually, do you need that much gear to head out there and photograph a typical sporting event? Not everybody is a professional sports photographer. Some people want to take photos of their local teams, their kids playing sports, football, cricket, rugby, basketball, whatever it might be. And actually, realistically, three different cameras and three different lenses isn't a realistic setup for everybody. I mean, where do you stop? Maybe actually you should have four cameras because you probably want a remote camera as well. Maybe you should have five so you can put a remote camera either end of the field. Perhaps six so you can get a different angle. You could go on forever. And so I thought this challenge to see if we can photograph a football game with one camera, one lens would be good fun to do. Before I get into the detail of it, I'm going to ask you guys to do two things for me. Number one, hit that like button, hit the thumbs up because it helps me out loads and loads on my channel and I really appreciate it. Why don't you think about subscribing if you haven't already? Loads of other videos to come, which I think you might enjoy. So I was having a bit of a random look on the Canon website the other day and I saw a lens which I've been well aware of for a long, long time. It's not a lens which is new to me and that is this bad boy right here. Now at first glance you might say, well Rob, that's just your 70 to 200. It is not. This actually is the Canon 100 to 400 f4.5 to 5.6 IS Mark II. Now this is a really versatile lens. A lot of wildlife photographers will use this type of lens and a lot of sports photographers especially more amateur sports photographers, maybe anyone who's out there working during the daytime will probably be using this lens quite a lot. And that's what got me thinking. Well, actually, that focal range, 100mm, it's not that far off my 70mm, all the way up to 400mm, you could shoot an entire sports event with just this one lens. Now, it just so happens that tomorrow I am due to shoot a football match and I am going to attempt to shoot that football match with my 1DX paired up with this lens right here. If we get these two together, I mean, look at that for a setup. Just that right there in my hand, we could shoot an entire football match just using this. Of course, there's a couple of things that I need to be aware of. The biggest thing is going to be the apertures that I can achieve with this lens. Of course, normally my 400mm, I'm shooting at f2.8. My 70 to 200 is also f2.8. Now, the fastest that I will be able to get with this lens is 4.5. And actually, if I'm out at 400mm, it's got like the push-pull zoom on it that you can see there. If I'm out at 400mm, I will actually be at f5.6. Of course, that's going to make a big difference. That's going to make my image darker. So I'm going to have to be working with higher ISO levels if I want to achieve that same shutter speed. Of course, the event that I'm doing is during the day tomorrow. It is a 1 p.m. in the afternoon kickoff. Realistically, would I be able to do this challenge shooting a game at night under some weaker floodlights or maybe some indoor sports? Probably no. I'm not going to try and pretend that I could. But certainly, I think, for your average sports photographer looking to shoot something like a kid's game, in the afternoon when it's light this could really work especially when you think that this entire setup right here would cost just a fraction of the price to buy all those other lenses and all those bodies together and that's why I wanted to see if we can make this work so one of the things which I just want to touch on is the settings that I will use to achieve this because I need to be aware that my exposure will be changing as I zoom in and out with this lens because the aperture will change. I don't want my shutter speed to change because I need that to remain consistent. So what I will be doing is setting myself up. I will shoot in manual mode. I will have my shutter speed set to one thousandth of a second and I will set my ISO to auto. If I do that, it means that the ISO will adjust as I zoom in and out and therefore it's going to adjust the aperture, it will adjust the ISO accordingly. I think that's going to be the best way for me to use this lens rather than me trying to manually change the ISO every time I zoom in and out. I probably won't be able to keep up with that quick enough to keep hold of all the action coming back and forth. 
I'm not, not going to lie to you guys, I'm a little nervous because I intend on committing to this challenge wholeheartedly and that means that my 400mm f2.8 will not be in my bag. I'm going to make sure I really commit to this and really give it a go. I need to think a little bit about where I'm going to sit. I probably will aim to get near the corner of the pitch and I'm probably going to try to get right out at the corner by the corner flag just in case I get any celebrations run towards me. I can only get out to 100mm instead of my usual 70 so I want to make sure that I'm that bit further out into the corner. Of course the long range I'm not worried about at all because I can go to 400mm with this exactly the same as I could normally on my other lens. As I said the game's tomorrow I'm going to take you guys along show you a little bit of what I'm doing there and then we'll probably be back in here tomorrow evening where we can review some of the images and we can see how we got on. I think it's going to be good fun I'm looking forward to it and I will see you guys tomorrow at the game. Okay guys so we are out here I hope you can hear me right because it is pretty noisy and it's pretty windy but I'm out here I'm at the game and I've got my camera I've got my 1DX and my 100-400 and that is all I've got you can see in front of me here no other cameras out no other lenses gonna see how we go my plan is probably just to shoot the game I'll show you guys a little bit of b-roll so you can see what I'm up to here um, and then we'll head back to the office we'll check all the pictures and see how we get on I position myself by the corner um, so the corner flag's just here um, and I'm out so that my 100 is wide enough even if the play gets a little bit closer to me. So it should be good, looking forward to seeing the photos. I'll see you guys back in the office after we've shot the game. Let's go. so far I think we've got um, a fair few different images different range I'm loving the flexibility of the fact that I've got one camera and one lens I'm not having to work between two cameras so yeah we're going all right but anyway that's probably enough updates for pitch side I'll see you guys after the game back in the office <laughs> back so <laughs> um how did we get on well look let's let's talk about that right and um uh, overall good day good day um really enjoyed it actually using some different equipment and trying to create something different for you guys it was good fun just just doing that really so just been looking through the images now don't be deceived the images in the background actually aren't from the game they're different we're going to flash those up on the screen uh, as we go so what I thought I'd do is break down into a couple of different categories really I thought first of all I'm going to talk uh, physically about like using the equipment and what I thought of using that for an entire game Second of all, I'll talk about the images and the images that I captured and how I think they hold up versus the images I'd capture with my regular gear. And I also thought as like a bit of a third category, I should touch on some of the things I didn't experience because actually that third category of the stuff I didn't experience is probably, I think, the most important factors when it comes to this lens. And we'll talk about that at the end, so stick around for that. So, number one, physically, what did I think of it? Look, generally, and for 90% of it, I, I loved it. It was great. To be able to shoot an entire game just using this, just this one camera, this one lens, was fantastic <laughs> compared to the fact that I'd normally have my big lens, my monopod, my second body, my second lens. That's an awful lot of gear. And actually, especially when it drizzled a little bit at the game today, that was fantastic <laughs> just to be able to put one simple rain cover bonk, over this and carry on was great compared to all the usual rhythmarole you go through old oh, cover over the long lens and your other lens and if I'm putting that one down do I need a towel to put it on and that that was really cool so overall that versatility of being able to capture an entire game from a hundred mil focal length all the way out to 400 mil using just this one lens was really really good I should however say there's a couple of bits physically that I didn't like one of the biggest things I found and actually this would be a fairly temporary problem is that I kept getting the zoom wrong and by wrong I mean I kept trying to turn the focus ring instead of the zoom ring now you guys who are familiar with this lens will know that the zoom ring is out here on the end that's where you turn the zoom and it has the push pull zoom all the way like that in and out for those of us that are used to using 
a 70 to 200 lens where the zoom ring is the one here nearer in towards the body and the one outside here this is the focus ring that really throws you off because I'm so used to zooming with this inner ring here that when I then had to change and I was using the outer ring I kept turning this focus ring and thinking why is it not zooming and the answer is because I'm an idiot so that's something that you would get used to right if you use this lens all the time that would just become second nature much in the way that it has with my 70 to 200 and you probably wouldn't even notice it but if you're brand new to using the lens like me that's going to throw you off trust me but you'll get used to it i'm sure the other thing that i found and it sounds a bit silly but normally when i'm shooting a game i have a body like this with a lens this kind of size with the 70 to 200 on a strap or down at my side and my other lens is on my monopod this lens intermittently gets pulled up, takes some shots and goes back down. What I'm not used to is holding a body and lens like this out in front of me for the entire duration of a game. And as much as this might make me sound like a little bit of a weakling, I struggled with that to hold this out in front of me for an entire game. I found it tough. I found my wrist was aching and my forearm was aching a bit just because I'm not used to doing that. I have one body that comes up and down all the time and the other one sits on the monopod. So actually I don't that often have to support the weight of a camera and a lens out in front of me for a huge long 45 minute duration of time. Even with like basketball games where I don't have a monopod, the cameras tend to be on the floor in front of me and they're going up and down the whole time. So I found that one a bit of a funny one. Again, you probably would get used to that if you're shooting a game with this the whole time. So moving on from there to the actual performance. Well, I've got to say, I suppose I'm not surprised to say that it performed really well. The focal range of the 100mm out to the 400mm range is really good for football. I'd normally want to go out to 400mm and normally on my 70 to 200, I'm in at 70mm. I compensated slightly for that extra 30mm range that I was missing by sitting out to the side by the corner, whereas normally I go on the end line a little bit in from the corner Corner, so I kind of gave myself that extra 20-30 feet of room so that I could compensate for the fact I couldn't get out wide enough. Out in that position I found it fine, even when the players were right in next to me in the corner, when I was out at 100mm it was okay. I had a player come right in in front of me for his goal celebration, which is fantastic, that's what we want, and I was able to capture it nicely out at 100mm. I didn't feel like I was struggling or having to back up to get the guy into the shot. When I was zoomed right out at 400mm, it was no different to using my other 400. I found it was better to reach right across the pitch, real good focal range, I was capturing the action down the other end in front of the other goal, really really good image quality I've got to say superb this lens is fantastic really really sharp great image quality paired up with my 1dx really pleased with the images that I got apart from one or two out of focus images which you tend to get some of any sports event you shoot if you come away and shoot an entire sports event without one single out of focus image fair play to you <laughs> well done you're always going to get a couple as I did with this but no more so than I would do with any other setup the images I did capture, I felt they're pin sharp, really great, love the colours and everything that came from the lens, perfect. Now of course one of the big differences with this is the aperture. Normally with my 400mm and I'm at a fixed f2.8 as I am with my 70 to 200. Of course using this lens it was variable. When I was in at 100mm I was at f4.5 and when I was out at 400mm I was out at f5.6. The biggest difference with that, it meant that when I was out at 400mm, I was capturing a deeper depth of field of my images. It didn't crush the backgrounds in quite the same way that it will when you're using your 400mm f2.8. For the look of your images, that can make a difference because it means if you've got players in the background, or as the case with this game was, maybe buildings, lampposts, fences, trees, it does mean that you can see more detail of those things in the background. And on a couple of occasions, it does mean there are more distractions in the background of your image. Don't get me wrong, you can still see those things in the background of a 400 f2.8, but it does crush them a little bit more because you have that more shallow depth of field. That said, when you're out at 400mm, you still get that kind of zoom compression effect of the background, so it wasn't a huge problem, and actually, I can't really say that I had many images where it made a problem in the way that I had too much stuff in focus in the background. 
around. In fact, there are one or two images that I got where it actually helped me. I quite often would try and take some images at 400mm across the pitch of the manager on the far side. Quite often they'll have other coaching staff, things like that around them, and actually it kind of helped the image to be able to get the other assistant coach in focus in the same photo. In much the same way on the pitch, when I had a couple of players in an image, maybe one of which was a bit closer than the other, at f5.6 I had both those players in focus, and again, that helped my image. The risk at f2.8 is that sometimes one of those two players might be a bit soft, where one of them is further away than the other one, and you're working with that more shallow depth of field. Just to briefly touch on the settings for you guys, in order to compensate for that variable aperture, what I did was I shot in manual mode, I set my shutter speed to 1 250th of a second, so I set that so it was locked in and it wasn't going to change. Because I didn't want to be constantly having to change my ISO level, I set that to auto, so it meant it would automatically adjust as the lens and the camera went from f4.5 to f5.6, the ISO automatically adjusted. And that in turn then becomes one of the things which I didn't like so much when it comes to the images, was the fact that it didn't always get it 100% right. Now don't get me wrong, actually I use auto ISO quite a bit, and you can trust it quite a lot with the 1DX, but it isn't exact and the problem is as soon as you have any aspect of your camera in automatic you have to trust the camera to make some kind of judgment on the exposure. These things are clever, they have computers and all sorts in them and quite often they'll make a better judgement call than me, but I do like to have the control. Of course I could have had that by manually changing the ISO up and down the entire time myself, but in that situation where you're zooming in and out and your aperture's changing all the time, I think it would have caused me more problems than it solved, so I went with auto ISO and it did mean that in a couple of my images the highlights were a little too blown out and I had to adjust those in post. Again though, not a massive problem and something which I could certainly live with. So overall, really happy. And to answer the question that we asked right at the beginning, could I shoot an entire football game using one camera and one lens? The answer is yes, absolutely I can. I did, got some really good images. And what I think this is really great news for is all those people out there who are shooting on a budget. Maybe you want to go shoot some local sports. You want to shoot your kids involved in their sports games, football, soccer, whatever else it might be that they get involved with. This suddenly becomes quite an affordable setup. You don't have to pair this lens with a 1DX, it could be a 7D Mark II or something even cheaper. But this setup itself, whilst it's not really cheap, it is an awful lot cheaper than going out there and buying a 400mm f2.8. Especially if you're shooting things like kid sports, which are mostly shot during the day, you would be set up really, really well with this lens and camera. I think this is really great news because those people out there shooting on a budget who are worried about having to spend thousands on gear, maybe this lens setup could help you and could help you to achieve all of your photography goals and don't forget you can always upgrade that gear and invest in more expensive lenses down the line. Now I think that does roll us into the third category and that's the things I didn't experience and really the biggest thing that would have made a massive difference of course was the fact that I shot this game during the day. It was an outdoor football game and it kicked off at 1pm. That meant it was light so the auto ISO on this camera even though it was having to jump up a lot higher because I was shooting at f5.6 even then I was only at like ISO 1000 maybe 1600 at the highest. I didn't have to get too high. Of course, if you were shooting at f5.6 at night time, maybe under some weaker floodlights, or indoors, something like basketball, then you would start to really struggle. Because if you're using your camera in auto ISO, or even setting your ISO manually, if you can only have an aperture that comes down to 5.6, you're going to have to have that ISO really, really high if you want to get a fast enough shutter speed. The problem then of course is that some cameras don't perform so well at those higher ISO numbers and maybe if you're at f5.6 under really poor floodlights you might then find yourself having to reach for those like ISO 10,000 type numbers and that's when you will have a problem and potentially this lens might not be a good solution in those situations. As I said though, the place where I think this really fits into the market is out there with those kid sports and family sports which are going to be mostly during the day anyway. This is also a very popular lens with wildlife photographers, bird photographers, again things that are very often shot during the day and so I can imagine it's fantastic in those scenarios too. 
I think that just about brings us to a conclusion. We asked the question, could we shoot an entire professional football game with one camera, one lens? Yes, absolutely we can, because we did. We achieved it, and I have a good set of images that I sent in to the team. They're really happy with them. So, challenge defeated. Now I've come up with another really cool challenge that you guys are going to see in a couple of weeks. I've kind of thought about doing a bit of a challenge series with stuff like this and I think I've got a really good one coming. I don't want to spoil it. Stick around. You'll see that one in a couple of weeks time. In the meantime guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favour, hit that like button, hit the thumbs up because it helps me out loads and loads on my channel. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. You want to stick around for the next challenge in a couple of weeks time. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next video.